Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanica. I hope everybody's having a great week. I had a super common issue come into the shop this week, so I thought I'd share it with y'all. A uh, customer said that their throttle trigger broke, that they went to another repair shop that gave them an entire power head and he tore it apart, put it back together himself. But unfortunately, for some reason, it's sticking whenever he goes to put it up. So it's not retracting correctly. Now the lever on the carburetor is moving whenever I engage the throttle trigger. So I know that it is actually pulling it. Why it's not pulling it back, we're gonna figure that out. But I, one of the most common triggers I ever have to change out is the steels. And even though I'm doing this demonstration on an FS38, it doesn't matter if you have an FS45, an FS46, or an FS55, which is the most common trimmer ever sold, it seems like. Um, these are all the same exact when it comes to the throttle triggers. So they, they all interchange. So we're gonna tear it apart. I'm gonna show you the inner workings of it and show you how to fix it all by yourself to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. Now, before I jump into tearing this whole thing apart, because it is not a fun one to take apart and put back together, there's one thing on the carburetor itself I wanna check. Where the throttle cable comes back and is attached to the carburetor, there's a little Z-bend in the end of it that goes into a lever that um, actually works the throttle lever inside the carburetor. So when I, uh, that's me releasing the throttle uh, trigger. When I pull the throttle trigger, you can see it, it goes up and nothing comes back down when I let go of the throttle. I want to release the throttle cable from the carburetor and make sure that the return spring is not broke on the carburetor itself because that would definitely be an issue. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my air filter cover and base so I can get to a better end so I can give you all a better view of what I'm doing here. Now, you do not have to remove this to do this. I just am doing it purely so y'all can see what I'm doing. All right, now that I have it a little bit apart so y'all can see what's going on here, I can pull it out a little bit. It's still connected by the fuel lines. Now, what I'm wanting to do is push this lever right here that it's attached to and actually, yeah, you can tell it totally works. I don't even have to take it off. So it's definitely something with the throttle cable itself getting stuck somewhere or in the trigger mechanism. And I went ahead and tightened everything back down and it still has the same issue. So see how it just gets stuck? I've got to manually push it back down. Let's tear it apart. Now, where do we start? We're going to flip it on over here. We've got two screws in the front. We've got two screws back here, one in the center. We've got one hidden screw down in this hole and another screw right here. And that should get us apart. Now you are going to need a T27 torque to um, remove all them screws, usually steel, echo, most everybody has the T27. Um, you can get the Owl Tools torque bit set. I'll leave it in the description box below and through my Amazon store and it, it works great for this. Also, I'm going to remove the plug because when I take the top off and put it back on, it just gets in the way. Oh, well. The case isn't even together right. <laughs> Everything's wonky. I can't even get my spark plug tool down in the hole because his, his uh, top piece is not in all of its slots. So I don't know if y'all know where I am in the world, but I am in central Arkansas. So Monday I am in, you know, the shade of totality with the eclipse coming this year. Um, so tell me what y'all think I should do. Should I stay inside? Should I watch it? Should I wear my welding helmet and not trust those glasses? <laughs> so. All right, that thing was begging to come apart. There's actually little snaps that it should sort of snap together when you put it back. It wasn't snapped. All right, let's see. <laughs> oh, I love it when he says it was running. Let me show you. It absolutely, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> oh my gosh, let me bring you in. So I want you to see here, this is the first thing I see when I take it apart. Now, this is the clutch drum. The clutch is under here, and uh, the drive shaft comes into the clutch. What's that poking out the side there? That's the drive shaft that's supposed to be inside of the clutch drum. Oh, Lord. 
So flipping it back over to the bottom now, I didn't know if I had to remove this center screw to take the drive shaft out just yet, but obviously I do because we're gonna have to remove it and line it up. Oh no, look at that. That's what happens when you don't get it in the hole, guys. Yeah, you, you really mess things up. Look, it's supposed to be a circle. <laughs> Uh, now it's, uh, boogered up a little bit. Yeah, you can't just go poking and screwing. You gotta hit the hole, guys. Now, that is to stabilize the end of your shaft, but when I go to put it back together, these two screws towards the very front of the throttle handle and these back two are really good about clamping everything down pretty tight, so it's probably gonna be okay. So let's see what's going on with this throttle cable. So it looks like the throttle cable is in place in its little slot here. It comes down, it's not frayed, so it's not catching on anything. But still with nothing prohibiting it here, I can push it up and it stays in place. So can y'all see what's wrong with it? Let's remove this throttle trigger. Now the only thing holding this throttle trigger in place is there's two little brackets, plastic ones on each side, one here and one here on the other side. And the bad part about that is I have seen these break before, so you always wanna be really careful because if you break one of these bracket clips, you can it will not ever stay in place and you have to get a whole new bottom handle and that is no fun. Another reason you might be watching this video, if you go to press your throttle trigger and nothing is happening, it's not engaging the engine at all, a lot of times it has come loose because this little bracket right here that holds a little ball end on the end of the throttle cable will break off, so the end of your throttle cable is just bouncing around in here. So be careful with that too. All right, so before I take it out, I can see why it is not working and why the customer had had issues. I'm going to give you all just a second. If you'd like to comment below, if you know what is wrong with this throttle trigger that is making it get stuck, leave it in the comment box below. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull it on out. Get my little pokey here. Let's see if I can get under this side or this side. Bring that end up. Oh, it is lodged. I'm going to break something. What in the world? Come on up. Oh, there we go. All right. Now the reason that this thing is sticking, let me get my flashlight here. This spring on the side of it, and see which way he had it? It was upside down. Yes. We're gonna turn that spring over. <laughs> and uh, put it in the right way so it actually pushes the trigger back down into the disengaged position. All right, let me see if I could show you where this spring goes correctly. I need to, I need to get it out. That's what I gotta do. I just gotta pull this whole thing out so I can show y'all. I gotta take off the throttle cable and then see if we could finagle this thing out of here. When you're pulling it out, you're going to have to push that throttle lock up to get it out of the hole. So anyways, whenever you're putting it together, this sits on the lip of this throttle trigger right here. It does not sit down here, and it goes inside this little notch right there. So yeah, putting it back together is not fun, okay? <laughs> because it's going to want to come off there. So we got to finagle our trigger back down inside of our hole, make that stay in its spot, and then... Get it to work. I don't know. Watch. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do it. All right. So we're going to put our trigger back where it goes. It goes in easier than it comes out. That is good. We have to attach our throttle cable before... We clamp it into place. Our spring is still in its spot. And then we snap it back down. Just like that. Now let's see if it works. Up, down, up, down. Oh yeah. I also probably wanna show you this before I start to put it back together, but whenever we go, we'll put our shaft back in and this will go back down through the top 
before we put our top uh, cover back on. These two little nipples right here go in these two little holes. So the, if you worried about, you know, where everything goes, but at the same time, you've got your kill wires here. You're going to have to put them back down in this channel. That way they don't get pinched. And last but not least, before we put our shaft back in, I've got my kill wires in their little hole. I've got this piece with its nipples in the bottom, but there's one more thing. There's this plastic piece that comes down the side. Let me show you what I'm gonna do here. There's this plastic piece that comes down that's connected to the whole safety lever situation. And it's wanting to go on the wrong side whenever you put it back together. So you just, you just gotta push it over to the other side. Okay, <laughs> and then see if I can get you in there. Then it's in the right place. So make sure you do that before you go to put it back together because your shaft will not go in if it's in the wrong spot. So now I can slide my shaft in. Now, why was it stuck like that? It's because they obviously put the shaft in last and they had the cover on it first. And so it's, it's a lot easier to do it this way. This will want to pop out on you. So you, you know, that's why I said you got to have four hands, but uh, yeah, that's the way I like to do it. That way I can see and make sure I'm getting, getting it in the hole, you know, okay. Move down here, slide it through. Oh, it's a little bit of an oval. All right. So I'm holding this together or it will pop out on you. We're right there in the hole. Did it want to go in covered? Nope, nope, it's in there. We're gonna go all the way up. So we get over that hole. It's not right. Something ain't dropping. Maybe I should have took a gander in that hole. See what's going on up in there. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. Okay, we are in. Now, once you're to this point, you're gonna want to continue to want to hold on to this part. We want the plug boot to come through there, come down on it, and when we put everything back together, we'll probably hear some pops here in a second. All right, we're going to flip it over and start putting some screws back in. Now, when you go to put your screws back in, you'll have five long ones that you took out. Now, if you took some extra ones out the back, you could have done that too, but, and then you'll have one that's short. The short one is the one that goes back through that center of the shaft. If you put one of those long ones in there, it's going to ram into your shaft and, uh, you know, that's not going to be good either. So. Now we do not want to tighten these totally down because, um, it will make it to where we can't, uh, turn the shaft around and line that hole up when we're done. So just loosely put them in. You got one in the back that probably didn't come out because the throttle cable holds it in place. All right, now that we got to that point, we got to find the hole. All right, let's see if that shaft's gonna hold in there. Yeah, it's good. All right, so let's see. Oh yeah. Works good now. One more thing I do want to show you about the throttle cable though. There is a throttle cable adjustment on here. So if your throttle cable keeps pop popping out of its hole or if it's too tight, if you look right here, there is a screw on the back of this plastic base. And what happens is if you turn it in, it will bring this whole plastic base up, which is tightening your throttle cable. And if you loosen it, then it will you know, relieve a little bit on it. So just let you know, there's a secret adjustment right there on the top by the gas cap. So guys, before I head out, I do want to remind you, I am fixing to hit 400,000 subscribers. So I am doing a free giveaway in celebration for it. If you would like to enter to win, all you have to do is comment either on the last video I made about it, this video, or probably the next couple I make before I hit 400,000. And then I will be giving away a ton of prizes. I have a bunch of depth text endoscopes, some hats, some t-shirts, and an echo unit. I'm not sure whether it's going to be a echo trimmer or a chainsaw yet, but if you would like to enter to win, all you got to do is leave a comment and be a subscriber. 
Also, I just started a brand new Amazon store, making it much easier instead of you going through a long list of everything I suggest to you or with the parts and tools that I use. It's one click away with tons of pictures if you'd like to check that out. All the tools I use today, plus the parts to this trimmer, I'll go ahead and add them. I'm gonna start doing that under every single video I make. Whatever I work on, whatever parts come with that unit, you'll be able to find them all in one spot. So guys, thanks again for tuning into Chicanic. If you find yourself coming back over and over again, think about hitting that subscribe button. It helps out the algorithm to make my videos shown to more people to save them time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find me on Instagram at The Real Chicanic or find me at chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day.